And joining me at ringside, I'm very happy to have Big Daddy Gary Goodrich. Yeah, glad just, to be here. Just coming off his sensational first round okay. win. How fast was that win? That was a quick win. It was uh, 51, seconds. 51 seconds on a forearm show. This is going to be an exciting fight tonight. I think so. I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's see how much Sataki has prepared himself. Uh, Maurice Smith and uh, Kosaka, let's see what they taught him. Now, Gary, you faced both these gentlemen. You faced Sataki in kickboxing and, and uh, Mark Coleman in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Yes, I've lost to both these gentlemen in both their disciplines. But uh, it's a different story tonight. You know, uh, the life has, uh, has moved on a little more. This should be a good fight. So it's the kickboxer versus the wrestler. It's always a classic matchup when that happens. And here we go. Getting ready for the big shoot now. Coleman will shoot. He's not going to want to stand up with Sataki. Uh-uh. Both fighters very relaxed. Sataki looks like he's a little bit... Uh, a little nervous. A little nervous, a little tense. The feeling out here. I feel each other out. There's quite a bit of difference between training up in Seattle and getting in the ring with Mark Coleman, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. It's a lot of difference. But uh, he's got some good, strong coaches behind him. Um, uh, the Kosaka and um, Maurice Smith, uh, the good positive guys behind him. Coleman so knows see. he go, goes for that double leg. Sataki tries to sprawl, and there it goes. Yeah. Coleman with a sit, double leg takedown right into Sataki's guard. Going for that neck crank. Sataki trying to push his way out. Sataki could be in some trouble here, although I believe that he must have been coached by Maurice in the same attack. It looks very similar to when Coleman fought Maurice. Oh, yeah. Got to weather a big storm right here. Coleman trying for that neck crank. Sataki tapping out on a straight neck crank. Sataki, uh, I guess he wasn't used to that. Like I said before, there's a difference between training up there with neck cranks and then getting into the ring with one of the strongest competitors in the Pride Grand Prix 2000, Mark Coleman, getting a big victory, a very quick victory. Congratulating Kosaka. There they are, the two former nemesis. Mark Coleman. Beautiful fight. Congratulations, Mark Coleman. But uh, you still got to give Kosaka you still got to give Sataki um, hats off for getting in the ring in his first NHB match against a man that's uh, a proven man. Yeah, uh, Sataki, you know, he had the uh, courage to get in there against a guy of the stature of Mark Coleman. And here it is. Coleman is just waiting for that shooting opportunity. Takes the double leg takedown. Coleman, a former Olympic wrestler, very hard to stay on your feet with that man. Goes to the neck crank immediately. Sataki pushes his way out at first, but then Coleman just grinds away a couple punches to soften Sataki up. In order to get out of that, you need to drop your guard and, and push your butt back. This releases the pressure, but uh, an inexperienced person don't know this. And he so goes he, to that neck rank, yep. and he gets to tap out at 1 minute and 14 seconds. Sataki in some pain there from the neck crank. There's another angle. Coleman stalking his prey, going for the double leg. Pulling double. Sataki nice on his back. Beautiful. One minute and 14 seconds, neck crank. Well, Coleman obviously is glad that this is over quickly. And he's obviously going to be looking forward to entering for that $200,000 cash grand prize. And there's the neck crank, and there's the tap right there by Sataki. Coleman's paid his dues, and he's back in the winner's circle again. There he is at ringside. A huge victory for Mark the Hammer Coleman. Coleman. Yes. The dream team. Good work, Mark. Hammer side.
Very good victory. Coleman looks like he's ready to go for another one. A great win for Mark Coleman. I don't know if I'd want to get slapped five by that man right now. That's a lot of power coming here. Yeah, but you know something about power, Gary. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Coleman's a little pumped up now. The adrenaline's going, so he's uh, slapping a lot harder than he wants to, you know? Now, there is a possibility that you may face him again at some point. What? Oh, good, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Anyway, as we were saying, there's a chance that you may have a rematch with yeah. Mr. Coleman. I'm looking forward to the rematch. I would like more, nothing more than to beat him a little bit more. <laughs> you know, uh, Coleman and I got some unfinished business. I mean, we're friends and everything, but in the ring, we're different, you know. We're different here. He's trying to, see, there he goes trying to mimic me. See that? See that there? Yeah, I like that. See, Gary, one of the things that makes you a very popular fighter in Japan is that sensational winning personality that you have. Well, you know, you got to do it like it is, and you got to say it like it is, you know, because I don't back down for nobody, you know? I've had to go on some people's doorsteps a few times to straighten them out on how what, the, what, what has to be done. Okay, here we go, the next match of the evening. Igor Volchanshin from the Ukraine. The punching machine. Here he is against Gary Big Daddy Goodrich, my compatriot here at ringside, and against Akira Soji. Both Chanson is just a brawling machine. He just lays it to everybody. Mark Kerr, he dropped with the right hand. He's got punching power. He's got tenacity. He's got a lot of experience. A huge knockout there of Francisco Bueno. He knocked Bueno unconscious there. Look at that mouth he saw. Look at Bueno. Who? That's a horrendous knockout. Igor Both Chanson. This man defies all logic. Up against Alexander Otsuka. Well, this is going to be a good match. Former because, professional uh, wrestler. This is his fifth appearance in Pride. He is the man who defeated Marco Huas. Marco Huas was a former dominant figure in the no holds barred fight world. And Otsuka put it to him one night. Then he fought Henzo Gracie in the previous Pride, Pride 8. Got some good takedowns with Henzo, controlled the fight. Got out of Henzo's submission attempts, inevitably losing a very close decision to Mr. Gracie in Pride 8. Alexander Otsuka, the diet butcher they call him, versus Igor Volchanchin. Our next sensational matchup from Japan, Alexander Otsuka, hailing from pro wrestling, against the Ukrainian punching machine, Igor Volchanshin from kickboxing. <laughs> Mr. Ice Cold, Igor Volchanshin. <laughs> Alexander Otsuka comes in right around 200 pounds, and Igor Bovchancha does have the weight advantage at 238 pounds. Otsuka is 28 years old, Bovchancha 26. Both men have had multiple appearances in pride. Both Chanson has been, this is his fifth, or actually sixth pride, wow. and this is the fourth time Mr. Atsuka has been in pride. I expect that Mr. Atsuka is going to want to take this fight to the ground quick, Gary. Uh, expectation is correct. Uh, he's got a good shoot. Uh, it'll be a lot of feeling out process here.
but he's looking into the eyes of experience at Igor Bovchanchin. He's been in with some great fighters, yourself included. There's the shoot and the sprawl from Bovchanchin. Bovchanchin grinding away with that right hook. The Daya Butcher has taken some leather. Igor continues to grind away on that left ear of Mr. Atsuko with that right hook. That's going to start to smart after a while. Just a little bit. Back to standing. There. there we go. Alexander got his nose bloodied a little bit. He's ready to go, though. There we go. Going a wild right hand. On paper, it would appear that Atsuka would be outgunned in this fight just from the weight and the experience. Definitely. But we'll see because he's got a lot of heart. Oh, spinning back, kick, attempt. Missed clearly, but nonetheless, he's just reminding Igor that there is more to his toolbox than just the shoot and the tackle and the submission. Well, Chanson takes his time. Both Chanchin uh, does not have what is called a bodybuilder body, but he's got stamina to spare, Gary. Oh, beautiful right hand. It's a clean knockdown there. Left uppercut right hand by Igor Both Chanchin. Maybe we should give him an eight count. <laughs> oh. Flying drop kick to the leg by Otsuka. It missed. Crowd liked it, though. There's the shoot and the sprawl. Seems to be a pattern that we're getting into. Igor has got a real good straight pancake sprawl defense against the double leg. He most certainly does. He's uh, well-rounded. I'm expecting a knee any minute now. There and there it go. is, just as you predicted. Now, Igor has a certain demeanor before the fight. There's another pancake sprawl, slapped him straight down. I picture that Otsuka's going to have a really difficult time getting Igor down. He most certainly will. It appears that uh, Otsuka's a little tired already. If you see him, he's uh, breathing really heavy. Maybe that uh, wrestling match in the afternoon wasn't such a good idea, Gary. Probably not. Watch him. His mouth is wide open already. He go with that left-right combination, partially blocked by Otsuka. Nice left hook to the body. Ojanshin controlling Otsuka. Otsuka trying to spin out unsuccessfully. Now, Igor got into some trouble when he had Mark Kerr in a similar position two prides ago. He threw a couple of uh, knees of which he seemed to have a, a, a lock and a victory, but he gave it a no contest because of a couple of knees in the same position. When a, pos when a person's on all fours, uh, you cannot knee to the head or kick to the head. But if they raise up on at least three limbs, you can go to the head with the kick or the knee. That's beautiful. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand what the problem is. You should be able to knee or kick the head anytime you want. It would seem because it gives the striker more of an advantage if Most you can if, if you can do that. In this position, Igor could be raining those things down a la Don Fry versus Omri Batech. Igor's hammering away. Not too much on them punches. He's got no room really. But the punches on the ear do eventually affect the equilibrium and it stings. Oh, oh, they start ringing after a while, yeah. Because that membrane is very sen sensitive. Asuka... He's got his mouth wide open now. He's still focused. He's got Igor backing up, though. There's no quit in his eyes. Oh, he threw his own punch, and Igor caught him with his. Otsuka's got a lot of... Oh, beautiful right hand by Bojancic. It rocked Otsuka. Another big hand. Oh, oh. Bojancic almost. Bojancic's in a bad situation here. He's in a potential triangle, triangle or an armbar. He's got to be really careful here. He passes the guard. That was a very good escape because Atsuka had him in some potential trouble there, Gary. I'm, I'm unsure if Alexander Suka really um, practices much on this uh, 
on this NHB game, but uh, definitely uh, looks like he's got a lot of stamina from playing the game earlier, as well as, uh, boy, let me tell you, he's, he's taking a lot of leather tonight. Yeah, well, he's obviously a great athlete because to do what he just did against Igor Bovchanson does take at least, at bottom line, some athletic skill. Igor is very difficult to choke out. <laughs> he's never been choked out. He's fought some top Brazilian jiu-jitsu people, and he's just been able to get out. They've gotten his back. He gets out. He just always figures out a way to get back up and drop the right and left hook. Tonight we have 48 thousand people on hand crammed into the Tokyo Dome to you know, see to see the opening round of the Pride Grand Prix 2000 and I cannot for the life of me see an empty seat there we go it looks like he's going for a naked choke he's actually going for a guillotine but Atsuka has the right arm and shoulder in there making it difficult for him to initiate that choke. Igor continues to grind away with that right hand. I'm not sure what uh, Alexander's uh, strategy is at this point, but uh, doesn't seem to be doing very well. Uh. There's not much he can do at this particular point point because he does seem to be a little bit tired <laughs> wrestling he, he, earlier he might try and tuck and roll but Igor is really strong guy he doesn't like I said before he doesn't have a bodybuilder body but he is he's got a lot of upper body strength and lower body strength too so Igor has decided to give uh, the right hand a rest and go to work with that left chopping hook now back to the right Maybe Atsuka is uh, hoping that Igor will punch himself out, but uh, nobody so far in his fighting career has ever seen him do that because he seems to always have one more punch left. Maybe Igor should just stand up from here. Push his way back and stand back up and see. Uh, I, I thought that uh, that's what Igor would be doing to begin with. Yeah, because rather than just sit there and play this game, because he can't get a clean shot off, he has more, much more opportunity to, if he just stood up to land a clean shot, possibly a knockout. I think they're going to have to clean the mat after this uh, particular match. Yeah, it seems that Alexander's got a bloody nose. Uh, it's hard to see. stand up. He might have other... Uh, cuts as well. It's hard to see from this point, but it looks like he might have a cut under one of his eyes. Igor's being very disciplined in this fight, not throwing that knee when the man is on all fours. Chopping away. Oh, looks like Alexander might be going for a little spin out here. I don't know if he's got the energy to do that. Huh? Igor's got something else in mind. Yeah. <laughs> like giving him an excedrin headache. He's just not cooperating. But there's no quit in Mr. Atsuka. No. No, very proud man. He's virtually shut down in this position. Igor is completely dominating the fight at this moment. Atsuka is moving forward, but Igor should stand up here. But maybe Igor has got a different game plan. Maybe he is hoping that Atsuka will stand up and he can throw the knee on the way up. This is a different sort of ground and pound. Usually when a fighter is associated with a ground and pound attack, they are on top of their opponent with their opponent facing up. In, yeah. this, in this particular moment, uh, Igor only has side shots he can throw. He can't throw punches directly down to the back of the head because that Jupiter is prohibited under pride rules. Ten minutes past. We're only going to have another five more minutes of this. 
I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lull on the action that the referee restarted these gentlemen standing. I know that Igor doesn't have to fight another fight tonight, but let's hope that he doesn't uh, hurt his fist on that dome of Mr. Atsuka. There and, we go. And back up. And the action starts again. Remnants of last uh, fight with um, Alexander. He looked the same way. But he doesn't seem to be emotionally any worse for the wear. He seems no. still very much into the fight. Oh, spinning back kick attempt. Igor stepped in with the right hand. Goes for that back kick again. Atsuka almost landed that right hand, but Igor countered with his own right hand. Igor doesn't throw a lot of kicks. Oh! Big right hand by, by Atsuka. Now, Atsuka pulls him down. Oh, not a good position. No. Lokanchin is now in the mount. I don't picture Atsuka can have the energy to get out of this position. We could see uh, a, lot of, a good deal of violence resulting in a, either a tap out or a referee stopping the fight. The beginning of the end. Here we go. Igor is going to pick his shots. Atsuka will turn. Now, he knows that Igor isn't known for submissions such as a rear naked choke, so I, I don't know if he's afraid. He, he's not afraid to turn his back to Igor, because if Igor goes up high and starts to rain down the punches, he might just turn his uh, back and try and escape out the back door. Round and pound. Some of those were missing, though, Gary. A lot of them were missing. It appears that Igor is a little tired now himself. I've never seen this guy tired. He's thrown a lot of punches uh, when he had uh, Atsuka in the upside down position. The, most uh, most people that get um, get leather like that uh, from Igor usually fall down to their knees, uh, me included. But uh, this Alexander must have a hard head. He does because Igor has caught him with some clean shots while standing and also some clean shots while on the ground. Well, it seems that if this does go to the judges, that Igor does have the win in hand. I would say. I would think so, but I've seen stranger things have happened. You know, we're watching it from this angle, and other people are watching it from different angles might see something different. We do have an advantage here at, at uh, the booth because we get all the different angles from all the different cameras, where the, the judge, they only see one vantage point, so sometimes it can give them a different impression of what's going on. One minute left. Volchanchin in complete control in the mount of, of uh, Alexander Otsuka. Looks like he's going for an arm bar. Uh, yeah, Otsuka <laughs> is posting that arm. If Igor was any kind of a submission guy, he would have had a straight arm bar there. But he's just intent on doing his ground and pound thing. I mean, Igor is primarily a striker. Primarily a striker, but uh, you never know. Sometimes when uh, when a submission is waiting, begging you, you take it. He's not even trying for a key lock, trying to wear his arms out or anything. He's just grounding away. Hatsuka tries to buck him off. To and there's the end of the round. Igor Bochanchin helps up his battered victim. Gives him a little peck there on the cheek. 
And I think it's pretty well said that Igor has won that match. Very good. Igor completely dominated every aspect. Uh, Mr. Atsuka exhibited a tremendous amount of heart in that fight. He didn't quit. He took a lot of punishment. He did land a couple of uh, chopping punches himself, but they didn't quite have the power it taken. I mean, if a guy like you couldn't uh, knock out Igor Gokchanchin, chances are uh, a 195-pound professional wrestler might not be able to either. Alexander's not going to do it. That's Here we go uh, in the stand-up. Igor drops that overhand right. That, it's amazing that that did not knock. There's it, it, two That's times. Well it too. did not knock him out, and then, and then Igor made a mistake and almost gave up his back and then got back down into the guard, almost went into a triangle choke. We have a different angle. Ochanchi throwing that overhand right. So, so there it is, a unanimous decision for Igor Volchanson. In some ways, Gary, I don't think this diminishes Atsuka's uh, reputation because he went the distance, he went the distance with a man with that very few people go the distance exactly. with. Exactly. And he stood up to him toe to toe. He traded leather with him. He took some of Igor's best shots I've ever seen. That boy's got some balls, let me tell you. He knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. Yes, he does. And he, he wrestled this afternoon. That's crazy. What if he didn't wrestle? Maybe he might have... Unbelievable. Well, you know, his mouth wouldn't open as quick, but uh, he would have still got his ass kicked. Oh, did I say that on, on live air here? Or taped air? <laughs> here we go again. Both chancing with that big overhand right. That seems to be his out punch. He used that uh, quite effectively with uh, Mark Kerr when he fought him. But... Uh, I took, caught him there with a good counter punch, but Igor just shook it off and got back into control. Uh, um, Atsuka might have tried for an armbar there, but it's Igor with those short, stubby, strong arms. Here it is again. The uh, good right hand by Atsuka, but it, then Igor showed us what a real right hand feels like. And there's that. I, I, again, it's amazing to me that Mr. Atsuka did not go down from that first overhand right. To me as well, too. And it should have gone down for the second three and four ones. Я благодарю всех зрителей за большую поддержку, за уважение к этому шоу. Благодарю также своего соперника. Честно говоря, не хотел никогда с ним встречаться, как-то ему симпатизирую. Ну. Воля судьбы. Свело нас. Ну дай бог. Спасибо. The very soft spoken. Омени какарете урисидес. Пурайду то минус сам бокио уроку аригато гудзаймаста. Батайси но айтаве. Айтаба. То тему суёю. Батайси ва. The very soft spoken Igor Volchanson. Very soft spoken, very humble. He's a class act. I've interviewed him a number of times uh, for various magazines, and he never has a bad thing to say about anyone. No, and, he's a nice uh, and right uh, in that speech that he just gave, he uh, gave thanks to the fans of Pride and for the Pride organization. And he said that he's uh, got a nice friend in Mr. Atsuka. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's the good thing about some of these fighters, and yourself included. A lot of times, you, you, you guys will go to war, and before the fight, it's, it's war. But then after the fight, there becomes become a sort friends. of a bond and respect. Yeah, you become friends, uh, you know. I try to be friends with anyone that kicks my butt, you know. I, all, the, all the fighters that ever kicked my butt, I'm always friends with them. But guys that I kick their butts, hell, I don't want to talk to them. I already beat you, man. What do I need to talk to you about? 
It's just the way it is, you know. Well, you were friends with Amir after you beat him. Well, no, I, I, I never call him, never talk to him, never see him. You know, if, we, if I see him again, I'll ask him if he wants another butt kicking, you know, but uh, uh, no. But guys that have, beat, that, uh, that have beaten me, hell, I stay friends with them, try to learn their secret, their little technique, something that I can learn to beat them with. And here we go, our next match of the evening. Ensign Inoue. I am looking forward to this match. This, in some ways, on paper, is probably going to be the most competitive match. Ensign Inoue gets Frank Shamrock here. He's got giving Frank a lot of pressure here. And uh, Ensign wins on the ground and pound there. Continues to punch. Uh, seems to be some bad blood in that fight. Here he is with Randy Couture, UFC heavyweight champion. And he arm bars Couture very quickly. He's got that arm bar going on. His opponent, one of the strongest men in No Holds Barred fighting, Mark Kerr. Here, Mark Kerr against Bronco Sikicic in an early pride. Bronco hold on to, held onto the ropes and was disqualified. Here he is against Hugo Duarte from Brazil. Hugo didn't want anything to do with Mark Kerr. Continued to jump out of the ring, giving Mark Kerr the win by disqualification. Mark Kerr against Nobuhiko Takata. Kerr in a great side mount hammerlock submission. Mark Kerr, one of the top three fighters in No Holds Barred. Now this is going to be a good match. This is the match I've been waiting for. Ensign Inoue from Shuto versus Mark Kerr of wrestling. And now we have the seventh bout. Blue corner, Mark Kerr. Here he comes, former two-time UFC tournament champion, Mark Kerr. He's 31 years old, and he's fought in Pride. This will be his sixth appearance in Pride. He's from Ohio, 6 foot 1, 253 pounds. He fights out of the Hammer House dojo. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Kerr's last fight in Pride, Gary, was against Igor Volchevchen, and he had a really hard night against Igor. Uh, he didn't look too good that night. I think there was uh, more problems than we saw, but... Uh, I think we're looking forward to a good uh, good performance from Mark Kerr tonight, as well as his opponent. Mark looks like he's in tremendous shape, very focused. He's got Boss Root and Rico Rodriguez in his corner. So you know he's been working on his submission. Along with Marcus Vinicius from Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu Club. If you go by um, who's in his corner, you certainly know that Mark Kerr prepared himself for this match. I think he really did because with Boss Wooten uh, being a world-class striker, no hard fighter, and with a team of Rico Rodriguez and Marcus Vinicius in his corner, that's a lot of knowledge. And Mark Kerr steadily improves. Looks like he's in tremendous shape. A 253 without an ounce of fat on him. He's a puke.
Ensign Inoue has the nickname of Yamato Damashi. Translated into English, that means Japanese spirit. Ensign had some pretty strong words to say about this match. He said he will disfigure Mark Kerr's face and make it full of blood. That's what he wants to do? That's what he said he was going to do. He has predicted his fight with Kerr will be either a really fast one or a long war. And he uh, thinks that either one of them doesn't have any strong or weak points. Well, I think there's, um, both these gentlemen got a lot of proving ground to make right here. And uh, will tell a lot. But uh, I don't think it's going to be an easy fight for either one of them. I think this is maybe the most competitive fight of the evening in some ways. Uh, Ensign Inoue, uh, this will be his third Pride uh, appearance. He's wanted to get this fight uh, previously, but he broke his hand about nine months ago. And that postponed uh, this, this match. And now here they meet in the Pride Grand Prix 2000 opening round tournament. Uh, he's 32 years old, 5'11", 209 pounds. He hails out of the purebred shooting gym, Omiya. And his most significant win, obviously, being over former UFC heavyweight champion Randy Couture in Valley Tudo, Valley Japan, 1998. He doesn't really have that much um, NHB experience. Dated back from 95. But he certainly fought some good name people. Well, his only loss to two tremendous fighters, his only losses were to Igor Zinoviev in Valley Kudo, Japan, 96, and also to the great Frank Shamrock. After a war, he gave Frank Shamrock all he could handle, and uh, then Frank ended up winning on a DQ after Ensign was hurt pretty badly. Five minutes, uh, five minutes of fighting. Yeah. Ensign states that his uh, strong points are his aggression, his ground and his submissions and his attitude. He goes all out. Okay, Ensign has carved in the back of his hair a uh, Japanese signature writing uh, which translates into English and it means death <laughs> in the back of his head. So that's, uh, <laughs> he seems pretty psyched for this fight. Um, <laughs> in some ways, this fight is, is like, these men are jockeying for the, Ensign comes right out and Kurt takes him down into Ensign's guard. Ensign really tried to drop a bomb on Kerr right away, but Kerr had nothing doing uh, for the double leg into Ensign's guard. I expected that the fight would end up in this position pretty quickly. Uh, like I was saying before, in some ways these men are jockeying for their top 10 ranking position. Kerr was, until he fought Vogue Chanchen, regarded as the best fighter in the division, and Ensign, with his win over Randy Couture, had come into the top 10 but needed some other significant wins and he figured a win over Kerr would put would, him in the top 10. Well at least top 10 maybe if a win over Kerr would probably put him up in the top 5 or top 3. Um, Kerr is aware of this and Kerr has prepared himself very well for this fight after having some health problems a few months back. Kerr looks as strong as he's ever been. Most certainly does. He looks pretty relaxed. Relaxed here in the guard. <coughs> I would expect um, Ensign to look pretty nasty. Now, Kerr is starting to land some shots from the guard. Uh, Ensign doesn't really want to eat too many of those punches from the guard. 
when Ensign lost to Igor Zinoviev, it was from the guard. Igor uh, rained down the punches and was victorious from Ensign's guard. So sometimes, Gary, the guard isn't the safest place against a man of Kerr's caliber who does have some striking ability. He most certainly does. I tell you. Ground and pound uh, by itself doesn't work anymore, but let me tell you, when you, uh, when you get on top of a man and you really feed it to him, Wait, there's been some kind of a delay. I, I guess, I, I don't know if there was a clash of heads or... I think somebody raked something. Uh, Ensign raked his uh, glove over his eye and got something in there, I think. Yeah. Oh, Kirby being, cleared up now. Yeah, Kerr being the man of fair play, didn't want to take advantage. Uh, what Anson is hoping that Kerr will do is stand up a little straighter, that way he can slap the leg over the front of his face and go for the arm bar, but uh, what Kerr wants to do is stay close. And when he does go up, initiate the strikes fast enough to where Ensign can't grab the arm and pop the arm bar on him the way he did with Randy Couture. Kerr going for the neck crank. Ensign pulling out. Ensign in a loose guard. Kerr thinking about the leg. Falling back into Achilles. It's not a strong point, but he does know those after training with Boss Rutten and others. He is familiar with leg locks as well as the upper body arm locks and chokes. I think Kerr would try to be getting, uh, breaking the guard and going, uh, going 90 to open himself up for more, uh, more submissions because Kerr does know some submi good submissions. Now, Anson's really using the feet effectively and striking well from the bottom. Kerr did land a good right hand before that little sequence of action, but uh, now they're back into a loose guard. Gear, uh, now, now he's trying to pass the guard, and, and Anson is really trying to fight. Anson's got half guard now. Uh, if Kerr gets the side mount, it's going to be difficult for Ensign to do anything because Kerr is a master of the side mount. A master of the side mount. Master of balance. So he ain't going to get Kerr off him anytime too soon. It ain't going to happen. In a way, we have a, a clash of styles here. We have a submission man in Ensign Inoue and a wrestler in Mark Kerr. Even though both the men have trained and cross trains in various other disciplines, those are their primary disciplines, and Kerr will go back to what he knows best, and that is to hold his opponent down and beat him up and get the decision or the knockout. Amen. Whereas Ensign, he wants to try and make Kerr make a mistake and get the submission. As Ensign had prophesied, this looks like it's unfolding to be a, a false prophecy. A long, dragged-out war. Well, I don't see no bloody mess either. Well, we're only five minutes in. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Kerr's going for the smother there with his hand over Ensign's mouth, but he's just going to give that up. You know, wrestlers can be a pain in the ass to fight because uh, they're just so, they're like Velcro on top of you. You can't get them off. Very, very difficult, especially now when everybody's start, starting to cross-train, do everything. Well, uh, quite a few years back um, when uh, Severin oh, lost oh, to Royce Gracie, oh, 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 oh. Um, none of the wrestlers or other, the, the other fighters knew exactly how and knew what they were doing. Well, Kerr's landing some big right hands. Sorry, Gary. Uh, Kerr is starting to uh, connect with that right hand. I, 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 know, I know what you mean. Kerr has the advantage of training with people like Mark Coleman to really keep his wrestling game in shape. Exactly. And a lot of the American wrestlers did have a really great run there for a while. Um, Severn, Coleman, and then Kerr were dominating events like the UFC for a while before people got um, more hip to submissions and even kickboxing like Maurice Smith and uh, Igor Vovchanchin. The kickboxers seem to have done the best lately against the wrestling styles. Now, now Kerr seems to be doing quite like a bit. He's of, trying to smother him with his chest. He's trying to smother him with his chest, and he's cooking it pretty well. Ensign, uh, he's okay. He, he waved. He's, he was okay. In a position like this, the fighter on the bottom has to stay totally relaxed. If they tense up, they can make it uh, a quick fight for the man on top. 
Kerr's just cooking him here. Just biding his time. Letting Ensign slowly run out of gas. Because Kerr's got almost 40 exactly. pounds. The thing about that is Kerr's got no fat to um, move around his face when he's starting to smother somebody. Now Kerr, oh, that, those, those right hands are landing to the front of Ensign's face. Um, he decided to change it up. Being that lean uh, sometimes is not very good. <clears throat> Why is that? Well, see if he was Emmanuel Yarber in that position or, uh, or, or Tank Abbott in that position. All, all his extra stuff would be melting all over him. But see, because he's all hard and ripped and muscly, when he does that, there's all sorts of air pockets. It was sort of like being having the blob on top of you instead of like a tomato. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Got it. And uh, I, I understand your point very well that Kerr is definitely no blob. He's definitely, he's pretty ripped. Kerr continuing to grind that forearm, create pressure on the neck. Anson's strong. He's not going to be submitted from that, but it does have a wearing and tearing effect. Nice little hammer fist there by Kerr. Anson's got a bit of a bloody nose now from those right hands, which uh, Kerr has been pouring down on him. But, you know, against a submission guy, it's never over till it's over, to quote Yogi Berra. <laughs> exactly. They'll, they'll, they'll hang in there forever. Um, I'm, I'm sure Ensign is going through his mind thinking, uh, man, I, I should tap out. I wish he'd probably get me in something good so I can get out of this thing. But, uh, you know, uh, his mind is telling him differently. It, you know, he's fighting with himself right now. <clears throat> Not really Mark Kerr. Now, if Kerr wins this fight, there is the possibility that he could have a rematch with Igor Vovchanchin. Certainly. Or my, or uh, he could fight me. Or he could fight you. Yeah. <clears throat> I personally would like the rematch with Igor Vovchanchin. I think everyone that's ever been defeated by a fighter always wants to get back at them, don't they? <laughs> Amen. Like I said, he's my friend until I beat his ass. If you were to have a rematch with Igor Vovchanchin, how would you go about beating him? Uh, stick and move, stick and move. Jab, stick, jab, right, left, right, move, kick. Uh, just be um, moving around. And if you were to fight a man like Kerr, how would you go about beating him? <laughs> the same way Ensign's trying to do right now. You're going to fight it on your back. So the best thing you could do is just get a lot of conditioning at that and know that you're going to take a beating. Be able to withstand it and hopefully tire him out, make him do something else. <clears throat> well, in your last fight, you actually gave a very good effort in losing to Tom Erickson, who's quite a bit bigger than Mark Kerr. Yeah, yeah. So in some ways on paper, maybe Mark Kerr wouldn't be as hard as Erickson, per se. Although Erickson had, was coming back after a little bit of a layoff. Jupiter Pickard, Jupiter Pickard, 10 minutes past. Okay, we've got five minutes left in our match. Kerr has been in complete control from the top, from the half mount or half guard, whichever vantage point you want. We're grinding away with punches to Ensign Inoue, nothing of the knockout caliber. But Ensign has been remiss to do anything effectively in, a, in the way of a submission or counter strikes. He's, he's landed a couple stomps to Mark's leg from the side, but that right hand is landing with regularity on Ensign's head. Kerr is pretty much executing his game plan. I think when Kerr fought Vovchanchin, he uh, maybe got out of his game plan. Igor had something to do with that, of course, but um, he stood up with Igor a little bit. He stood up, and uh, well, Igor's really low to the ground, and he's got uh, a good center of gravity, so it's hard to... And when you look at him, it's difficult to shoot. It's a little intimidating, you know. And uh, as you know, well, as everyone knows, you know, Kerr is not a stand-up fighter. You know, he's a ground-and-pound type of specialist. 
Kerr does continue to improve his other elements. If, if there were, were weaknesses in Kerr's game, he's always working to improve those in punching, kicking, kneeing, submissions. So he is a, a, an astute student of the game. He just doesn't st stay at what he knows. He's always learning and improving. I think most fighters nowadays realize they have to do that in order to keep current and to stay uh, competitive on this level. Nice forearm strike by Mr. Mark Kerr. But Anson is not quitting. No, a lot of tenacity. <clears throat> but uh, Kerr hasn't slowed down any either. Kerr's grinding that forearm no, again. Eventually, that's going to be a problem for Anson because Anson's neck can only take so much downward pressure, then it's going to start to loosen up. Kerr's putting a lot of pressure on that neck. He's just laying on it, and Anson might try to bridge a little bit, but... Mark's trying to pass that guard. He's trying to get into the mount. Anson knows this. That knee pad is just about ready to come off of Mark's left leg. I think when he passes it, it's going to come right off. I think so, too, because... <laughs> Gary, you know that sweat is a factor. When a fight goes into 10, 15 minutes, the body becomes, it's like having oil on it. Exactly. Very lubricated. Uh, in Pride Rules, there is no uh, oiling of the body, no uh, uh, any kind of Vaseline on the body, nothing. It's all prohibited. But when a fighter starts to sweat like this, and it gets over 100 degrees in that ring from the lights and from just the action and the kinetic energy of the body, uh, it's hard to hold a half guard the way Anson is. So I wouldn't be surprised if Kerr at some point was able to pass that guard into the full mount. Here's that back hammer fist. And he's going for the neck crank. Looks like Anson's just trying to get the full guard. And Anson goes for the up kick. And now Kerr is standing. Goes for that roundhouse kick. Anson goes for the stomp at that knee. I'm sure Mark doesn't appreciate that. Goes for the low kick to the leg. Mark's been working on his Muay Thai a bit too, so he can use that as well. His shins are conditioned. I can attest to that. I saw him kicking the side of the bench a couple days ago at the hotel just to break time. So I don't think... Okay, one minute left. Okay, they're going to restart the fighters. That's a good decision. There was a lack of action. There was nothing significant going. And Kerr, I expect Kerr's going to throw a kick. Oh, he shoots and takes him down. Right back into the guard. It would appear to me that uh, at this point, Kerr has done more to, uh, to win this fight than Ensign has at this point. Uh, Ensign's really been uh, more guard fight. So I'd be quite disappointed if... Uh, if they made them go another round and didn't uh, award Kerr the victory. I couldn't agree with you more, Gary, because Ensign, you know, has not... Been, Kerr has prohibited him from doing anything in the ways of submissions or effective striking from the bottom. Where Kerr has landed that right hand with regularity, gave Ensign a bloody nose, lumped him up a little bit, gave him some hammer fists from the back of his hand, and uh, landed a couple kicks when they were in the standing. There's another right hand. Uh, and there it is. That's the end of the regulation period, 15 minutes. I wow. think that Ensign knows. I think Ensign, deep in his heart, knows. And I think Kerr knows, too. And there's a lot of camaraderie. There's no bad blood, per se. It's just competitive spirit. Mark Kerr seems to have done more than enough. Exactly. To, to win, win that, uh, to win that the, match. Yeah, to win the opening round of that particular match. I, I really don't picture that the judges would put that into an overtime round. Well, you know, I've seen stranger things have happened, uh, but uh, to me, I better not go another one. I'm with you, Gary. So what's that uh, carved into the back of Ensign's head? It means death. Ensign came right out with that right hand, and Kerr went for that double leg. Down in Ensign's guard. Ensign bridged up the arms, and Kerr landing that right hand, right forearm. And here we go with the judge's decision. 
判定をお願いしますジャッジ,ャッジごめんなさいマーケージャッジマッキンリフトロー,ロージャッジリシシマーケージャッジリシシマーケージャッジリシシマーケージャッジリシ Mark Kerr on a majority decision. Very good. Very good. No surprise.、Uh, Mark Kerr controlled the fight. I, I don't know how the judge saw it a draw. I, maybe they wanted to see an overtime round. I bet more of Kerr laying in this guard. I don't think that's. We don't need, really need to see more of that. No. Kerr controlled the fight. He did what he had to do. Wasn't、uh, an exciting fight, but a fighter of Kerr's caliber knows that he has got to do what he's got to do to win. There he is, Mr. Mark Kerr. Henson's got nothing to be ashamed of, but、uh, as I said, I, I believe that that was the toughest,、um, toughest first round draw.、But、those right hands, Henson felt those right hands. I mean, even though he's pulling him close, some of those, Mark Kerr got some distance. He pulled, pulled back enough. I would just like to thank you. For over a year, I was supposed to fight Anson. Finally tonight, I was healthy enough to. And I'd like to thank Anson. He has a heart of a warrior. He's a true gentleman. I love you all. Thank you very much. 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 A very classy marker. Thanking the fans, thanking Ensign Inoue for a, a, a good, solid fight, and moving on into the finals of the Pride Grand Prix 2000 tournament. So Kerr advances. Back in the winner's circle again, Mark Kerr. And now joining us again at ringside, in addition to my compadre, Big Daddy Gary Goodrich, we also have now returning after cornering, successfully cornering Mark Kerr, Boss Rutten. That was a great victory for Mark,、uh, yes. Boss. Yeah, I, I think it's a very、uh, big victory because I consider Anson as a real good fighter, and、um, you know I, I saw it as a big obstacle, but、um, he just did what he came to do, and.、Uh, Yeah, that was win. Ready. It seemed like he really executed his game plan to a T. That's it. Only a, a little wish that he would have pulled the leg out and went to side mount and then for, went for the total destruction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mark. What a bit nice. Gary and I were commenting that Mark Kerr in the side mount is not a pretty sight. I mean, he can really do some damage from that position. Yes, he can. That's what we saw with、uh, Paul Verlins and several other fighters. That's and here we go. The Gracies in pride. There was there was controversy in the last pride.、Uh, Mr. Sakuraba、uh, won on a decision.
グレイシー・ジムリスの歴史が始まって以来を聞きついに最高権力者が動いた最後の切り札を伴ってグレイシー最強の歴史グレイシー Coming back after a near five year layoff, former three time UFC tournament champion, Hoist Gracie has taken a bit of a hiatus from no holds barred fighting. He once dominated the sport in the United States. <laughs> Mr. Nobuhiko Takada facing for the third time a Gracie fighter. He fought Hicks and Gracie twice, Pride One and Pride Four. Now he's going to face Hoist Gracie. Here he is against Hickson. Hickson with a classic double leg slam into the arm bar. That's from Pride One back in 1997. He sure picked a tournament uh, for a comeback, eh? I mean, all these fighters in it. Mr. Takata did a lot better in that second fight with Hickson, but the result was the same. Just took a little longer. And here we go, the final fight of the evening. The classic matchup, Nobuhiko Takata from Pro Wrestling versus the returning Hoist Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. So here we go, the match that all Japan has been waiting for, the return of Hoist Gracie versus the ever popular Nobuhiko Takada. Classic matchup of pro wrestler versus Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Hoist did choose to wear the gi. Unbelievable, unbelievable in this day and age that he still wear the gi. And Hoist does weigh the same fighting weight he did when he made his miraculous victories in the, in the three of the first four UFCs. Now let's see if Takata can scroll. Because Royce is going for Tegan. Don't tell me that he's a master boxer. Like that. Whoop, there we go. Royce shoots in, shoots in high, locks up high. And he wants to drop himself into the guards. Royce would probably pull the guard. Now it looks like the gi is already getting wadded up behind Royce's back by Mr. Takata. There's a knee. I'm expecting a knee from Takata shortly. Hoist is working for the trip. Here comes the knee, just as Gary prophesied. And Hoist pulls guard, and down they are. They're on the mat. Now, this is where Hoist wants to be. Hoist likes to work from the guard. Mr. Takata has never established himself as a ground-and-pound type of fighter. He's more of a stand-up kicker and some submissions. But Hoist is going to go... 
Now, Takata's up high. He's got the gi. He's holding onto the gi, so it's going to be hard for Hoist to do anything other than... What is the weight difference between the two fighters? Not very much. Just maybe uh, 30 pounds? Uh, Hoist is about uh, 176 pounds, which is uh, close to his fighting weight, like as I said before, when he used to fight five years ago. Mr. Takada, we have here as weighing 209 pounds, oh. although he looks a little heavier than that. Yes, that's what I thought, that's why. So about 30 pounds, according yeah. on paper. Yeah, yes. Oh, that's okay, that's... 30, possibly 40, depending on uh, how accurate our statistics are. Well, providing that, uh, that Gracie wins here, he will be fighting people, I'm sure, um, almost uh, up to 100 pounds heavier than him. Yes, eh? Yeah, they do. That knows exactly what well, he's he, doing. There he go. Hoist is going up with that leg. Hoist is going to bring that leg up in front of Takata's face and go for either an armbar or a triangle. And this is his game. This is what he wants. He's very patient. It's not a good thing there to hold up. The key like key. that there yeah. with the straight arm, you know? That's asking he, for an armbar right he's there. He's asking for an armbar. Well, that's more like begging for an armbar. Yes. Hoist is going up high with those legs and now bringing it back down low. I think probably looks like he's looking for he's an armbar. He's going for armbar, yeah. He wants to go on the left, but the cutter. So. Oh, maybe he wants to finish it off in style with a figure four, Senkaku. That would be great, huh? Because armbar is getting, yeah, he, get caught, he was caught already two times in the armbar by Gracie, so let's see if he can make a nice triangle choke for us. Senkaku. Senkaku. Now, Mr. Takata does have that right arm taped up pretty heavily. That's the same arm that Hicks and armbar twice. And it, then Marker over it. And then Marker did his uh, hammer lock on that same arm. It would really be a disaster if Hoist armbar that comes, same here arm. And here, there it is. And Hoist is going for that same arm. And he leaves the arm there. I can't believe he's, it. He's trying, to, he's trying to hook that uh, left leg up in front of Takata's face. Just hit him. No, why, why is Takata not hitting? Takata seems uh, content to be patient, shall we say. Oh, this is a really cool one. Let me see if he can pull the elbow. He's going to set it up for the left arm of Takata. Watch it. Let me see what he does. Hoist is digging away at those chopping heel kicks to Takata's uh, kidney. kidney. He's starting to mark up the side of his body. Not a lot on those, but after a while, Garrett, those are going to add up. Yeah. Yeah, especially after the fight. You're going to sit down and you think, what's that pain in my back? That's where the heels. Now, it uh, kind of puzzles me why Takata is not doing any offense. Nothing at all. I would strike him as hard as I could. Look at this. It is smart, you know. He plays a smart game, and that that strange kick that he made to the head before from the guy that was was pretty cool, you know. I think when it hits, and it's on the jaw, it will hurt anyway. So. You know, Hoist Gracie is a very limber fighter. Oh yes, it's unbelievable. He can do the splits both ways, I believe. He's just digging away. Look, he's even grabbing his own leg and hitting. It's very smart. You know, you see it getting red already, so there is an impact. His father, Helio, looking on intensely. But if uh, Takada not, is not going to hit, then uh, Hoyes is going to win the fight like this. Go, go, go. Looking for that arm bar, for the left arm of Takada. Well, so far, uh, Twice Gracie has made all the offensive moves. Takata has been content to just hold on. And now, he, th there he goes again, boss, straightening those arms, posting the arms with the gi. He wants to hang onto the gi. Hoist could even use the gi as a weapon against Takata in the right position. Such as he's doing now. He's wrapping the gi around Takata's neck. And it would be a little embarrassing to get choked out with a piece of clothing. 
Yeah, but it's not going to work. <laughs> right? If that's going to work, it's going to be a miracle. No, it's not going to work. What he, the only thing, it's, it's a little bit of a hold what he got, but nothing serious. It might be a distraction, though, because Sakakata should punch. That's the thing he should do. But yeah, he doesn't do it, so. Yeah, because from the guard, you can strike a lot. Yeah, I think well, this is time other, for the referee. Um, the only other alternative why Takata would be doing uh, a game plan like this is that he's not in shape and uh, he's afraid to exert too much energy doing something. Yeah, or, but I mean, uh, from, uh, listen, man, punching, you can punch. Thousand punches and not get tired. I mean, I mean from the guard. Well, why, why else would uh, Takata choose to, uh, to have such a, a game plan? Yeah, I don't uh, know. The only thing I can think of is that he would think that Hoist Gracie would tire himself out, but I, I don't think so because Hoist, after a five year layoff and coming off of that jiu jitsu loss to Valij Ishmael, he's going to be in shape for this fight. He's ready. Yeah. And he's going to put his best foot forward because th their whole, his whole legendary reputation is online here, and he, he's not going to come in and get gassed. And Takata's just laying there. Oh, look at him. He's, he can uh, eat a sandwich and drink a beer now, you see. He's <laughs> He's relaxing, he's taking his time, but Takata has to defense. work. Very good defense by Takata. Yes, but, but you're not going to win a, f a fight trying to defense. block an arm bar. Maybe, I mean, maybe he thinks with the takedown that the takedown is enough. Maybe God knows what he thinks, you know. You see what he does, he tries to camouflage the punch up. That's a pretty smart move. Yeah, he covers his eyes and then he hits with the other hand. But, Boss, you yourself know that you can feel when a, a person is going to uh, punch you in this position. Oh, yeah. You can. you can just feel it. Because all of a sudden their, their hand is not next to your head anymore, pulling it toward you, and you know that they're going to whack you. My God, guys. Well, the only other thing would be uh, Takata's just made, trying to get into the second round and um, pick up some momentum. I think even though Hoist has, uh, e e even though Ho Hoist has established the fact that he is doing most of the action, he's not hurting Takata. He hasn't come even close to a submission. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this went 15 minutes, if it doesn't change, and there was an additional round, Gary. You know what I hope? That this will go for an additional round, and then another one, and another one, till finally somebody gets tired and does something. You know, because otherwise, it's going to take a long time like this. You know, if Takara doesn't work, he has to work. He has to strike. See, there's nothing he, he's doing right now. Well, you know, also, Gracie, as, um, as a fighter, he knows how to push the, the opponent. He could still be put in his legs... Uh, his heels and uh, his opponent's hips and rock, walking his shoulders back in order to make Takata work. Yep. In order to make him do something. So it's really um, both of, um, of them standing there, sitting there watching each yep. other. That's true. You know, That's true. Gracie's uh, maybe using 10% of what he really can do at this point, and uh, Takata, I'd say he's about 8% of what he can really do. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're, they're really both not doing anything. Yeah. I, I really think that Takata's using 7%, actually. Do you really 7%, 8%. <laughs> oh. All right. Step into the ring. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the 8 But I've got to work abstract. here at ringside, Gary. So five minutes left in what has not turned into an exciting fight yet. Oh, what? Oh, sorry, I uh, d d dove off a little bit. Yeah. Two men waiting for each other to make a mistake. Really, that's exactly what I'm seeing. We get into uh, a situation here where in no holds barred or kickboxing or boxing, is it a sport or is it entertainment? People do pay money to be entertained by fights. Yep. And 
sometimes uh, a fighter has to take that into consideration of, of their, their responsibility. To there's him. a face crunch. Yeah, and there's an armbar coming also. Yeah, he's he's, uh, something up. he's working the face crunch. He's working <laughs> over under choke. He's working to get that. Uh, it's a face crunch, but if yeah. Takata brings his head up, he will have the if choke. If he's going to push him off, then he's going to go for armbar. Oh. Yeah, it's just a distraction, basically. I mean, he, he could get the choke using the gi, but Takata might be able to just bust his way out. Takata has done absolutely nothing at this point. No. Except hold the gi. If somebody put the gi in my face, I would blow my nose in the head. <laughs> But that's really that's really poor hygiene, though, isn't it? Or I know, but to just see, hey, get that piece of cloth away from me, you know? Yeah. Look, his his, his back is turning into red. Nobody says so something. Three minutes. Ah, three minutes. Three yeah. minutes left. It makes me wonder what would have happened if Hoyce had a different opponent, let's say Igor Bovchanchin or Mark Kerr. <laughs> I know what would happen. Or Big Daddy. Or Big Daddy. Big Daddy with his mokers. <laughs> <laughs> because there, there have been, it's almost as if Takata decided he's not going to strike at strike. all. Yes. Zero strikes. It, that's exactly what I wanted to say. It looks exactly like it. But if it were Kerr or Gary or... Coleman or Volchanchin, there would be strikes. That's so why it's going to be a tough on the second round. And a whole lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, and also it's not attractive for the people right now, you know. Well, so far, the people that have won in the tournament, um, we've got some fairly dangerous individuals, so no matter how these things match up, um, going to be tough. It's going to be the, the 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 finals on May 1st will be tough. We've got Sakuraba, Gary Goodridge, yeah, Fujita, Kirasoji. We've got Vanderlei Silva, who's an alternate, but a very dangerous individual. Mark Coleman, Mark Kerr, Igor Vokchanchin, and the winner of this fight will have to face one of those gentlemen. <laughs> what a tournament, though. A risky proposition. <laughs> Any way you slice it, Gary. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I know you do. God, man. Gary, you've never shied away. No, sir. Take it to him. Win or lose, but I'm going to beat somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you already did tonight. <laughs> okay, one minute yeah, left. An I, coming. I, there's an armbar coming. Okay, yeah, he's, he's going. No, he's giving it. Hello. There yeah, he's just totally, yeah, he's posting those arms straight up. Don't tell him he's going to get straight on both. Uh, it doesn't, uh, time's probably going to run out. I mean, unless he makes... Unless Takata makes a huge mistake, Takata might be waiting for the restart after the overtime. It looks like it might go to overtime. I, I, I there think we go. that Hoist has done. It's hard to say. I mean, he. Takata could be doing them little chops from there on his face. <clears throat> because Hoist has got a nice nose. Something like yours, boss. Oh, yeah? I thought uh, mine was much prettier. Just a little bit. Yeah. He's got a high bridge. It looks like it could be a. Tendered up a bit. Oh, there's, there's a strike there, by Takata. That's the first oh, punch he threw. Right. Oh. But he threw the punch. Oh, no, the hoist is going. And that's the end of regulation. <laughs> Round one. Takata is limping. What? T something's wrong with Takata's. Oh, no. I think it's, it's cramped. Something's wrong with Takata's left leg. Yeah, it was already hurt, you see? Okay, now that's what's going to happen. He's going to stop the fight. Uh, oh, please uh, don't let it be like this. That's, uh, that's really going to be an unfortunate and anticlimactic way to end this fight. Uh, people do want to see the last fight possibly end in uh, a certain amount of finality, a submission, probably. Uh, Mr. Takata is in pain.
Uh, looks like it's going to be over here. Yeah. Takata is uh, obviously in a good deal of pain. Here we have Hoist trying to work that gi and striking underneath. These were good strikes, by the way. These those two were strikes. Yeah, really the relaxed, goes. good punches right on the chin. Going for the over-under choke with the gi over the top. Takata trying to warm his way out of it. Stay close. Uh, Mr. Takata looks like he can't even stand up. So we shall see. Uh, Takata looks like he's limping toward the ring. And here we are to the judge's decision. Well, I've seen uh, a lot of love taps. Hoist has won a unanimous decision against Nobuhiko Takata. In a way, I, I understand the decision, and he did more than... Takata, Takata did virtually nothing. Hey, listen, there was, that is not a victory, you know. I want everybody, look at the people here in the audience, and, uh, and, and myself also, and uh, hey, everybody in the audience. There was nothing. Takata did nothing. Nothing but one punch. After that, he took him down. No, no, that was it. I guess it, you could say that he showed up, he got in the ring, and he held the gi. He didn't want to fight. No, not good. His last fight against Hickson, that was a good fight. Yeah, he gave Hickson a good fight in that second fight. Now, it looks like that knee is pretty messed up. That's but it's a thing we don't know, but you see, because he's got, yeah, his knee is messed up. But still, he could have punched, he could punch, 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 you know, go for something. Yeah. So we've uh, seen the return. We've, we've seen the return of Hoist Gracie. Uh, here at the Pride Grand Prix 2000. And he was victorious over Nobuhiko Takata via a unanimous decision, 15 minutes. And looks like we're going to hear something from Mr. Gracie. I shall do the translation. Okay, let's hear your translation. <laughs> Never mind. Now, I really wonder where they're going to put him up against the, in, the, in, the, in the final. You know, I would really like to see him against Mark, you know, like they have planned a long time ago already when he got his back injured. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would I really like to see a fight like that. I would like to see him against me next match. Yes, no, that's what you want. <laughs> So there's the two uh, candidates already right there. I wonder if it's an honor to be fighting in this Pride Grand Prix. This tournament, get together, got together with the best fighters. And it's a pleasure to be here because I'm back and I'm here to stay. This is my house now. Well, those are pretty, um, pretty harsh words. Uh, I think he's got a lot of owners in that house, boy. Yeah. And it's, yeah. But uh, I like to hear that. Uh, the, the thing about this tournament here is that... We're all fighting for the same power. Thank you. But you hear the reaction of the audience. It's, um, it was a shame, you know. I really would have seen, like to see a nice triangle, a nice armbar. And they give a hand for Helio. This guy was a big master in his time, and he was, he fought everybody. Big guys, 80 kilos heavier, you know. He took it on. Which guy? He was the man. He was the man. He really was. This guy? That's Horion. Horion. This is Helio.
Look at this. Marcher, Igor Chanchen. Royce Gracie. Mark Coleman. My God, Sakuraba. And in the ring now comes Daddy Goodrich. This is going to be a very nice tournament. There they are, Stephen. Look at this. There they are. These are the men that will meet in tournament combat. The Pride Grand Prix 2000, May 1st. They will be, they will be vying for $200,000 first place, $50,000 second place, and two third place winners will get $25,000 each. What? An amazing lineup. An unbelievable lineup. Plus, we're going to have a super fight, Ken Shamrock, to, uh, to a 2B announced opponent. Whoa! I thought somebody got shot. <laughs>